and welcome to this week's edition of Wildcraft Dyeing. This week we are dyeing with lupin and you're not going to believe the amazing results we can get with both the leaves and with the petals. Come join us. Lupin is a genus of plants in the legume family Fabaceae. These include about 200 species, mainly in North and South America. They can also be found in North Africa and around the Mediterranean. They are a herbaceous perennial. They grow about 0.3 to 1.5 meters or 1 to 5 feet tall. Lupins have soft green, sometimes gray-green leaves with fine silvery hair. They are found in a wide variety of habitat, often on disturbed soils, roadsides, and in urban gardens. They are considered an important food source for several butterfly and moth larvae, as well as bees. Now, when it comes to dyeing, you want to collect two different parts of the plant. One is the leaf and the stems, and the other is the flowers. I collect both of these in two separate Ziploc bags. For the first part of this video, we're going to be looking at the fiber prep before we head into the dyeing. Now, the first step in any natural dyeing is usually to mordant. To mordant is the process whereby you introduce your fiber ahead of time to dissolved metals in water. And by doing that, we allow different colors to come out onto the fiber. So here we have two different colors of yarn. One, the dark tan has been introduced to iron and the other one has been introduced to aluminum, both heated for an hour. For more in-depth discussion on this, check out my video on dyeing with acorns when I go through this process much more intensively. I'm not gonna do it in every video and so I'm just gonna carry on. If you have more questions, I recommend checking out that video for sure. So whenever we're gonna dye, we always wanna soak our fiber ahead of time for about 20 minutes. Um, and that's just allows the fiber to soak into the dye pot really nicely and make sure that our results are going to be even. So here we're going to soak these two. These are what's going to be going into the pot that's for the leaves. And the second one, this is going to be for the petals. Now, I've been reading that the flowers can give you a turquoise. And one thing you want to try is dyeing with wool that's already gray. Now this is a natural gray. This wool has not been dyed. Uh, that's just the color that came off the sheep. And then I have another smaller one that is um, the iron. So for the petals, I have the white and the gray. Both of those are pre-mordanted with alum. And then again, the smaller skein is with iron just to see what that gets. So that's why there's a gray one um, in the pot on the right. That's going to be for the petals. And the one on the left is going to go in um, for the leaves. Um, and here I am, I'm just giving them a little bit of a soak and then we're going to go over to the stove top and then we're going to do some dyeing. So again, here's the one on the left that's going to go with the leaves and this one's going to go with the petals. You might be asking yourself, okay, well, how do I know how much to harvest? How do I know how much to collect? And the answer is when it comes to dyeing with a lot of parts of either trees or with plants, you want a 10 to 1 ratio. So when it comes to the leaves, you want 10 times as much leaves, fresh leaves, as you want fiber. Now that might sound like a lot, but don't forget there's a lot of water in here. So I chopped up a bunch, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well first of all I'm tearing, uh, which means I'm just uh, taking out the weight of the bowl, and I'm measuring the weight of those leaves. Um, and I have about, I think I had about 300 grams. So that lets me know that I need about 30 grams of fiber in order to get a really deep color. Um, here I use a paint bag. These are available at the paint store. What uh, You don't need to use one if you don't have one. But what's great about them is you can put your dye material in, you heat it up for an hour on the stove, and then once you pull out the bag, your pot is all ready to go. You don't need to decant or filter anything. Um, if you don't have one, don't worry about it. You can just uh, go ahead. But uh, what I like about the bag is it just keeps the, the dye material and the fiber separate in the pot. I should also mention that you always want to chop it up. I find a lot of the plant leaves can have like a waxy coating um, that's going to inhibit the dye. But by chopping it up, it just seems to allow that water to really penetrate. Um, and then I'm going to heat it on the stove for an hour. I'm careful not to boil. I just want to keep it at a nice simmer. And what you'll find is that first the plant material is going to float on top and it's going to retain that green color. But over time, it sort of cooks down into more of a yellowy brown color and it starts to sink down. So this has now been cooking for about an hour, again at about 80 degrees or 160 Fahrenheit. And now I'm going to add that pre-soaked fiber. As you can see, it just sinks down nicely because it's already been wet. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now simmer this for another hour. Um, you can either take the bag out completely. This time I decided to keep the bag in just to allow every single um, you know, molecule, every single what they call chromophore in that dye to try to come out and into the fiber to get as dark colors as I possibly could. So I stayed and I cooked it for about one hour um, and then I turned off the heat, I added the lid and I let it soak overnight. All right, it's the next morning. I thought we could start with the stems and see how we did. Okay. Whoa, fantastic yellow. I'm so in love. Beautiful. Okay, what's next? Oh, that looks like a sort of true milk chocolate. Sometimes with a lot of these plants, it goes for much of a darker, darker brown, but this one came out. Now onto the petals. Um, here we've got our bag and I've got our the stem and the petal. And what I, the best way to do it that I found is you just hold it at the end and kind of, um, I'm not even sure what the word is, but you sort of you know, pull it out past your fingers and the leaves just, are the petals just come off that way. Um, I found through lots and lots and lots of dyeing with Lupin is you're really looking for uh, these deep purple color. As you get to the end of that flower spike, um, it's just a little bit green and they don't want to come off as easily um, so I just let those stay on the the ends of the plant end as you can see kind of on that left hand side by the scissors um, and I just stuck with those deep purple petals uh, those have the most dye potential it seemed like so again I'm looking for a 10 to 1 ratio that's 10 times as much petals as I have fiber um, so I weighed out the petals and then I did the, my fiber calculation after that um, again, I'm going to use the same kind of paint bag I used before. Um, I just love it as a process, but if you don't have them, you don't need to use them. Um, but I put them in first, I add my petals, um, and then I add the water, I heat it for an hour, and then I pull the bag and the petals out at the same time. Um, so that's just kind of the process, and then it keeps the petals and the fiber separate. But again, you don't need to use it. Um, so here I'm using just warm water from the stove, or from the stove, <laughs> from the sink. There we go, from the sink. Um, and then, yeah, I just fill it up about, I think I did about halfway up and took it over to the stove. Now, here's where testing a lot of different dye pots really added up. If you are looking to get a blue from the petals, you're going to want to cook the yarn and the petals at the same time for 45 minutes up to two or three hours then pull your yarn that will give you a blue if you're more interested in a turquoise you can do what i'm showing you in this video which is heat up your petals for an hour then add your yarn simmer that for about an hour and then leave it to overnight that will shift the color from that blue into a turquoise so more heat, more time is going to give you more turquoise. When you're collecting lupin, you're going to look for lupin where the flowers, each of the petals of the flower is a dark color, a dark violet, um, as well as keeping that 10 to 1 ratio and heating it for at least an hour up till about 70 degrees Celsius. Um, and that should give you a nice, beautiful, deep turquoise. So here I've added the fiber. As you can see, I have white wool, which has been mordanted with aluminum or aluminum potassium sulfate same with the gray wool it's also been pre-mordanted with the alum and then i've got some wool in there that's been pre-mordanted with iron just to see what that does okay here's the flowers oh i'm so excited i'm so nervous what happened okay this one is the gray. Oh, it's got a little bit of a blue to it, but it looks still quite gray to me. All right, gray. And then here's the white. Oh my goodness.
it came out of real turquoise. I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but it's an absolutely beautiful turquoise. And then I did a little bit, just a touch of what the iron would do with the flowers. Uh, not much. It's kind of like a brownie. Maybe hints of blue. I don't know if I would do iron again, but I would definitely do this, the white. Fantastic color. Here are the results at the end. I still couldn't believe how beautiful that yellow came out. And even the turquoise, once it was dried, it even went a little bit more blue. I'm not even exactly sure how, but it draw once it was dried, it was definitely more blue. So I thought I would go through all the results just in turn um, and show you exactly what I ended up with. Oh, but before that, I just wanted to mention quickly, so here's the blue. It's such a great blue. I also tried dyeing with the inner of those upper stems that were underneath the petals. So here are all the results together. Um, unfortunately, the video is kind of washing out this beautiful yellow. So I will, uh, I'll send you a photo later. It's a, it's sort of a standard lemony yellow, but it's coming off as more of a tan in the video, unfortunately. So this was just with the flowers. Oh, sorry, this was just with the leaves. This is the same leaves, but with gray wool. It's kind of come out, kind of an okay gray, gray green. Um, I'm playing around a little bit with tin. So up on a loop and where the flowers are, you have a stalk and the stalk is a slightly different color underneath the petals. So I separated that and tried to dye with that. This one came out kind of a minty yellow. Um, and then this is tin. I've got a, I've done a, a test stain of tin and I was trying it out. Um, it sort of tends to get lots of this sort of rufous color. Um, here were the flowers. So this is 10 to one. Again, it's a little bit more of a turquoise. It's really washing out the yellows today, but it's a really bluey, beautiful turquoise. Uh, super happy with that. Um, this is the same color, but with gray wool. Oh no, this is the iron, sorry. Iron, that's interesting. I kind of went a little bit of a darker gray blue. This is copper, didn't really do very much. And again, this is tan, you can see that rufousy color. But this is about four pounds worth of lupin. So dyed at 10 to one, definitely this is worth, uh, worth a forage, I think. Hope you guys are having a lovely day, bye. So in this jar, I added a quarter teaspoon of washing soda, and this one a quarter teaspoon of vinegar. Um, check the pH. This pH was about out of 10. This pH was about a three, and I left them in for about three, or no, sorry, about five minutes. So this one, you can see, kind of had a greeny wash. Whereas this one, much more of a blue. extra piece of yellow here too or I mean a wall so we're gonna take this I want to see if I can do a post dye dip of iron so we're gonna take some ferrous sulfate when you use a mordant afterwards it's called a modifier I'm gonna take one of my teaspoons here the quarter teaspoon this is a set I just used for dyeing. I just got it. Um, <clears throat> okay, here we go. Another teaspoon. Maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. Normally you want to weigh these things out, but... Okay. So, the... The bath is very cool now. Okay. I just want to make sure that it's nice and dissolved. Okay. 
So I'm going to put this in and then I'm going to set a timer for about three or four, let's say three minutes and see if we can get it into a green. Sometimes we can get shifted into a nice green by doing this afterwards. And I'll leave that. everyone hope you enjoyed this week's video feel free to like and subscribe for more content